Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between the Badger Soltar 2020 and the Chrome Renegade, and which one would be the right fit for you when deciding to buy a detailed airbrush. The reason why I'm making this video is mainly to explain it for people who ask me this question, and I get this question a lot. When I suggest airbrushes to start with in the Badger line for miniature painting, I first suggest starting with and learning with the Patriot 105, then later going with either the Soltar or the Chrome. Now for the second part, which of the two you should get for your detailed brush is the harder part to explain. First off, this is a suggestion based on painting miniature figures and vehicles. If you're looking for an airbrush for terrain building, I would suggest a totally different set of airbrushes to get. We'll cover that in another video. Second, the Patriot 105 is the go-to brush I suggest to start with. It's a great overall general brush and you'll be using it all the time even after adding a detailed brush to your arsenal of tools. Also, if you grasp the practice of trigger control on the Patriot to lay down detailing, then you're way ahead of the curve when transitioning to a detailed brush. We'll get into the Patriot in another video. When people ask me which detailing brush to get, I always suggest either the Siltar 2020 or the Chrome Renegade. Both internally, the brushes are the same. The nozzle sets come in the same sizes and the mechanics are the same. The difference in how I would suggest which brush to get is all about the feel and preference. I always suggest in deciding which airbrush to get is to hold them in your hand, give them a try, and see which one feels better. In a perfect world, this would be great. But we don't live in a perfect world, and the chances of you knowing someone with both brushes or being able to attend a hobby show where a badger dealer is attending can be slim for most people. So I'll try and explain it here based on my own experiences. The information detailed here might be different if you ask another person. The best knowledge that I could use in choosing a brush goes like this. If you write with holding the pen or pencil close to the tip, then the Soltar is what might fit you. If you hold your pen or pencil towards the middle, then the Chrome might be the better choice. But that's a quick and rudimentary analogy that I use for quick explanations. Let's take a look at the features available on both of the brushes. They have finger guards for comfort handling and a trigger stop. Now for us miniature painters, the trigger stop doesn't really do much for us. The purpose of one is to limit the pull on the trigger so we can control the spray, but the acrylic paints that we use tend to clog and thicken often in the brushes with such small needle sizes. Remember, anything with a .21 or smaller nozzle size brushes are manufactured based on shooting mediums like inks or watercolor. The standard cup sizes on the brushes are different. The cup is larger on the chrome, but one thing to remember is that you do not want to load the cup up with paint. When shooting for detailing, you only should be using a few drops. So the large cup size on the chrome shouldn't matter too much. I find it a hindrance because it blocks the sight of the model's surface. The only other reason to fill up the cup is usually for base coating or for priming. But for that, I would suggest using the Patriot. When covering areas quickly with less passes, the larger needle sizes on something like the Patriot will spray coverage more efficiently. However, it's not to say that you can't prime or base coat with the Soltar or Chrome either. It just takes a little more effort. The other thing I find that's annoyance with the Chrome is I have to remove the back of the chassis to access the needle. This affects me for the reason that I tend to do a lot of quick color changes when detailing miniatures. I can solve this by leaving off the back chassis, but this creates an awkward balance to the brush. Speaking of balance, I find that the Soltar has the weight balanced towards the front of the brush, whereas the chrome balance is spread equally across the body of the brush. I think the most important deal breaker that makes me select that Soltar over the chrome is the distance between the trigger and the tip of the brush. It's much shorter on the Soltar, so I have more control when I spray extremely close to the model surface. As you can see here, I tend to spray with my ring finger on the model to help guide the airbrush. This works great for me, but I can't do this on the Chrome. But this might not be a big deal for you depending on your spraying habits. But just for the fact that the trigger is close to the model does make a difference. Finally, it seems that most people that are comfortable with the Chrome are people with larger hands. And barring from any silly joke, that makes perfect sense. I hope this video helps you in selecting between the two brushes. Both are excellent detailed brushes, but it drills down to what feels better for you. Go with the muscle car, or go with a sleeker sports car. That's all I have for you today, and remember, if you want more Wargaming goodness, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon. And also, please like and share if you liked this video or helped you in any way. This is Chung, and I'm signing out. I'll see you in the next video.